All right, now in this video, I'm gonna make some birdhouse ornaments. All right, and they're birdhouses. They don't necessarily have to be displayed at Christmas all year long. They're pretty cool. And I'm gonna show you my process. And as a sort of a subtitle, I'm gonna say mass producing ornaments because um, my sister and my sister-in-law were just here visiting from Ohio. And oh my gosh, that is really, amazing uh, we had a really good time and i gave him some of my ornaments so i need to restock that particular piece in my gallery and i'm going to show you the process and i'm also going to throw in there how i make a lot of them all at once so all right now i'm going to show you the components of my birdhouse the way i make them and i'm going to make them a little bit simple i'm not going to put uh finial on the bottom This is what I'm aiming for right here. This is the base. Okay, and that's some uh, Mexican king wood. That'll be really pretty. This will go up into my roof, this uh, tenon right here. And what I've done is I've sized that to an inch and a quarter. So this inch and a quarter jig has a hole drilled through it. and also a hole drilled right here, and I've cut that in half, so when that's on my lathe, I can check that dimension, and it's pretty cool. So that's all ready to go. That's my base, and this is what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make three roof <laughs> sections, okay? And this is some ash, and I'll show you how I get to this point. So I've got a tenon on this end, a tenon on this end, and for the center roof section, I've also got a tenon. So, so let me just show you what I'm going to do here. Now you might hear my dog rooting around in the background. She seems to know when I'm making a video. So I'm going to take a pair of dividers. And I'm going to mark this blank in, into thirds. Right there. So I'm going to put a tenon here and here and then right in the center for this roof section here. And as I go through this process, I've got uh, a bunch of different little blocks of wood that I've, I've selected for the body of these ornaments. And I've also got some pieces set aside. This is just some maple. And I'm going to texture the roof section after it's done. I think another pretty cool roof <laughs> would be uh, this uh, walnut, which has got some very striking uh, heartwood and sapwood in it so I may get to that and just kind of make one or two out of this piece of wood so this uh, project is really good for using up some of your scraps this is a piece of box elder which would make a you know a couple uh, roof sections or maybe a body anyway okay I've also got a set of calipers here uh, set for my my tenon dimension All right, now I'm gonna just check these. This one can be a little bit smaller. This one over here, I'm kind of confined by my drive. I can't go any uh, smaller than this dimension, but it'll work in the chuck jaws that I've selected. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit smaller. Right there. And then I'm gonna make a, another tenon right here. All right, so I'm ready to part these off. I've got a narrow parting tool. All 
Alright, now I'm not going to part all the way through these. I'm going to put my chuck in here and uh, put one of the ends of my roof section into the chuck. Okay, now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to part this uh, roof off. Okay, there is one roof section and I need to make the comment especially for new turners it's a little bit trickier or maybe dodgy uh, to part these off between centers so I choose to do it like this I've got this in uh, some jaws here long nose jaws and it's a little bit safer this is not going to get jammed between your uh, tail center in the wood. So one more. Okay, and I did most of the parting when they were between centers. So here is one of my roof sections. All right, so I got three going and I can make 15 or 20 of these if I want to. I'll set these aside. So the next operation is I'm going to drill in the underside of my roof with an inch and a quarter drill bit and that's going to correspond to the base of my ornament right here. Alright, so it's the same size and all I got to do is drill a hole and I can glue that in there later. I can also use this recess as an expansion fixing if I need to, which I probably will, to complete the top of that roof section. All right. I'm going to put a couple of these tools out of the way. But I'm going to, I'm going to make a little bit of an indentation right in the center. All right, so this little indentation is going to help my my Forstner bit to uh, start true. Bring up my tail stock, tail center a little bit closer. I'm ready to go. This does not need to be drilled very deep. The lathe doesn't have to be spinning very fast. I always like to turn my lathe off before I um, retract my uh, drill bit. So there we go. So there's my roof and my base section ready to go. All right, you can start to see my little birdhouse developing. So here's the base and that fits up in there very nicely. Now what I'm going to do first from this point is I'm going to bring my tail center up for a little bit of support. I'm not going to glue this in here right now. I'm going to glue that in there uh, when I'm just about completely finished with this birdhouse. And, but for right now I'm going to bring my tail center up for support. I found a little bit smaller tool rest, which will be just perfect for this. This is a, a lot of people say this is a cute tool rest. Well, I guess it's cute. So I'm going to do a little bit of shaping on this. I'm not sure where I'm going to go, but uh, yeah, this will be really pretty when I get a finish on it. And I'm probably not going to put a finial on the very bottom of this, like I sometimes do. Try to keep this a little bit simple. So, move some of my tools out of the way that I'm not going to be using. Now, these kind of projects, like bottle stoppers and tops and lidded containers, they're all good projects for developing shape and form and all that kind of stuff. 
So uh, I'm going to just take a spindle gouge, round this over on the very bottom of this. This is a little bit out of balance, so I'm going to just take my, my spindle gouge and scrape this. A little bit more speed. Now I'm going to undercut the lower side of this roof, so I'm going to make a little push cut in here, undercut this, and then make a corresponding cut right here on the top of my base, right there. And that's all ready to sand, just a little bit right there. Now I'm going to come back to the very bottom right here. And I need to check something. How close I am to my, my holes, and I'm okay right there. And I can always put a little detail, I can put a bead or something down here, but I think the diameter of this needs to be reduced. And I'm going to turn the speed up here. And I'm going to just estimate uh, we're at about 1800 RPM. Now, that's a nice, clean push cut, and I shouldn't have to start at uh, any kind of sandpaper less than about 400. Eventually, I need to take that little, uh, that little bit of wood off at the very bottom that um, my tail center is up against. Show you that right there. So this little area, I don't want that little indentation in there either. So do a little bit more with this. And I, and I can't do that right now until I glue that in or I can also use a different kind of a chucking system when I do that. Alright, a little bit more and uh, I'll be done with this. Alright, now I'm going to hook my dust collector up, do a little bit of sanding and finishing on the base of this. Alright, I've got the base of my ornament uh, pretty well finished. Been polishing that up. I've got that jammed in there, and I need to take off this little bit on the very bottom. So, wish me luck here. So I'm going to try to use this small quarter inch spindle gouge and support this with my hand. And if it does come loose, at least I can catch it so it doesn't fall on the floor. All right, here we go. All right. Now that worked fairly well, but I'm going to take uh, a scraper and try to clean that up a little bit better. It's still a little bit rough. Alright, I'm going to go back to my sandpaper and work that over, put a little finish on it, and then I will start on the roof and start uh, working on that. 
Okay, I've got my roof for my ornament ready to profile. Here is the base, and that's all ready to, to glue in there, right there. So what I've done, just to do a little practice on this, is I've got a jam chuck for my lid. I've got some pin jaws that would fit this, but I think uh, it's good to challenge yourself a little bit. And uh, I'm not going to bring up my tail center. I'm going to just work on this a little bit. I uh, hope it stays in place. It's running very true. I'll get a spindle gouge and work on that. So far, so good. That's holding on there pretty, pretty well. All right, now this is a piece of ash, and I'm going to do some texturing on this. I need to do just a little bit more work on the very top. It's holding on there very nicely, so let me uh, proceed with my spindle gouge. And you might hear another lathe in the background. That's my lovely wife, so I'm going to let her turn her lathe back on. Go ahead, dear. All right, so very gently. I've got a little indentation there from the live center and that's okay I'm gonna put a, a hanger on the top of that I'll drill a hole in there with a, a small drill bit and uh, I can use that so that's holding on there very nicely I'm gonna sand that just a little bit not too much and then I'm gonna do some texturing so I've got this sanded to about 400 I'll do a little bit of texturing on this and the first tool I'm going to use is a Joe Wagner right there uh, tool texturing tool and I'm going to do that on this edge right here and I think that texture will look a little bit like an acorn I think I'm going about 900 rpm which is which is good don't need to be going real fast All right. Uh, now I was using quite a bit of force on that. I'm going to find a, a marker. When you really see what you're doing after you've done a little bit of texturing on this. And that looks pretty good. I always like to find another color we just we just use this blue go over that very lightly yeah that's not too bad all right now I'm gonna do one more thing while I'm in this position I'm gonna take my my point tool and define the border of this right here and right here all right I've got a black marker here Okay, now in this area here, I'm going to use 
my Robert Sorby texturing tool right in here. All right. I like that and keep in mind I'm, I've got this held in there with the jam chuck and it's holding very well so I'm taking some cobalt blue and I'm going to just cover, cover this And I'm thinking I'm going to only use one color on that. I really like that. So I'll give you a close up when I'm all done. And again, I'm going to uh, put a border around this with my point tool right there, right there. All right, now, as I said at the beginning of my video, part of the reason I'm doing this is I'm sort of mass producing this project. So I do, you know, five or six or ten bases and five or six or ten lids, and then I put them all together. I'm probably spending more time on this particular ornament. I'm doing a lot of texturing, and I wouldn't ordinarily do that if I want to do these quickly. But it's a little bit fun. So I've got a hole drilled in the very top of this and it's really ready to put together. I've got uh, a matte finish sprayed on this and um, that's probably all I'll do with the very top of this. I've got the base completed. It's nice and shiny. Now one thing I didn't do with the base which I think I will add into the next uh, series of ornaments I do is I'll drill this out and reduce the weight of this a little bit. It's, a, it's not really very big, but I think it's still a little bit uh, too bulky. So I'll probably drill out the next couple that I do. So anyway, let me show you some close-ups of the lid that I textured. It came out pretty neat. All right, there we go. I even put a little bit of texture right on the, the top of my, my roof. And uh, I'm not going to color that. I just kind of like that just like it is. Let me show you what I sprayed on that. Krylon matte finish. That works really well. And I can put three or four coats of that on. It'll seal that. And All right, now when that dries, you won't be able to tell there's a finish on there. So I'm all ready to glue this together.